This time we're looking at retaining walls, cuttings and tunnels. Hi, welcome back to Chadwick Model Railway. I'm Charlie and this time we're looking at building a retaining wall um, to go around the edge of the freight yard off into the layout. And obviously here is a quite a steep cutting going away down into a tunnel. So here you can see the freight yard plan all laid out and this is on 18 mil ply of which I have taken some of this off. And the reason for that is, is I'm trying to get my head around that even though this is just another layout really, in all, in all honesty then the, the kind of the land was here before the railway is something I'm trying to get my mind around. So if we got this hillside coming along here before the railway and it would have gone along here and so on and joined up with the bits on the other end. But of course the railway's come along and it's levelled off this area here, it's made a cutting down here to the tunnel mouth um, and obviously you know I need to make it make it the, the land form flow to show that the land was here before the railway so we get a sort of an element of um, I don't know truthfulness about the way the land is forming so gosh stirring stuff and just uh, as a starter sorry my phone decided to talk to me then and just as Thank you, Siri. You're welcome. <laughs> How embarrassing. <laughs> right. Um, so here I've put some commodities um, along the front and we have these sort of um, thin plastic arches. We have um, a Pico sort of stone wall. We have some plaster stone wall from Ten Commandments. And I think there's a bit of knock down there somewhere as well. Anyway, so we'll strip this out, take a look at it, and I'll bring the camera out from the other angle and show you the problems that I've uh, discovered. Now here is a diagram from the Scale 4 Digest number 62, and in this figure 6204, it actually shows you that the distance between the retaining walls are around about um, 30 feet, working on the track centres of 11 foot 2. Um, this leaves enough room at the size here for uh, drainage, soakaways, cable troughing and this sort of thing and um, it also explains here about the angle of these walls and generally speaking the retaining walls should be either vertical or sloping back between sort of uh, 10 and 12 degrees. Really good stuff and I'm so grateful for the scale for digest folks. So now we have an idea um, of where we're going. I just need to strip some of this stuff out of the way. Get rid of that. Take this board off. And then we can see what we need to do here and where we need to scribe our lines and um, plan to put in our retaining wall. Now armed with that information, what are we going to do with it? Well, so this area between the tracks is known as the six foot but in reality it's not quite like that because this even though this is a pico six foot way gauge and if you fit it between the tracks on streamlined track it gives you the correct distances but if you have taken possession of a scale model ruler from expo and you measure that distance it's not six foot it's actually just over eight foot and if you're a set track modeler rather than a streamline, you'll find that it's around about 12 feet. Right. So we know that's eight foot, which is obviously two foot longer than the diagram which I showed you earlier. So the distances between the retaining wall shouldn't be 30 feet because that's too long, too much longer, uh, much uh, two foot wider. So it must be 32 feet. Now, difficult maths. So half of 32 is 16. So, so from the center of here, to my retaining wall should be round about 16 feet. Beautiful. Now, this is a voltage tester with a hole in it. Now, I've tried this out. If I put the voltage tester alongside the sleepers <laughs> and run a pen along it, that will scribe a line that is 16 feet from the center. So all being well, I should get a nice big 
line, whoops, a bit wobbly, a line coming along my old dark track bed. And hopefully you can see that line. And I shall do the other side and finish off and get back to you. Now you may be aware that all this lot coming out of this tunnel was never going to be in a scenic area. There was never going to be a tunnel. The whole thing was always going to be covered over. But I thought it made a nice feature and that's why we're having these two lines going down into the tunnel mouth. The problem is of course because I installed this uh, foam that I use on my fiddle yard areas um, and of course now this foam has to come out because I need to install a ballast shoulder and everything else as this um, line develops. So I think now's the time to cut this foam back um, before I start on the retaining walls to give me to get that down to sort of ground zero. have it I've removed all the foam and I've uh, scribed in those two lines as you can see them where which are 16 feet from the center line so let's reassemble it and see what our angles are like so with our piece of cardboard on our scribed line we now have to work out our angles so with any good mobile phone it's got a, an inclinometer on it and what are we into? About 10 to 12 degrees. And now you can see that if this were up against the timber, then it would be too steep, uh, sorry, too shallow. Um, and around right about 10 degrees, we've got a gap appearing here. But that would allow the land to sort of flow down, um, sort of in, in unison with the land that comes off from this ab above the tunnel side. So what we need to do next, I think, is cut some foam board um, to give us the base for our wall structure. So here I have the um, foam board uh, piece made from, well, as the, the piece of cardboard I use as a template. And I had a little bit of an issue with it earlier because I couldn't bend it. And then when I try to bend it a little bit, well, it actually snaps, which is no big deal because then as it snaps, it gives you this kind of bendability, which turned out to be an asset, really. Well, that was, um, which turned out to be an asset. Anyway, there's the, um, the retaining wall kind of in position, but what are we going to do? What are we going to put on the front of it? Well, I've got a few things lying around. Now, um, Pico make these small, um, what would you say, stone panels, and they are actually quite good, good for making cottages and that sort of thing. They also make, if I can find it, larger panels um, which I've used um, recovered from the viaduct because they go on the inside of the piers. Could be useful but they are kind of a little bit too tall, not quite what I'm after. Oh and these things here, I, I soak them in boiling water to try to bend them to see if they would keep their shape and they don't. Talking of not keeping their shape and not buying things on a mobile phone which I did the other evening was I bought a couple of these panels from uh, Ten Commandments, not realising they were plaster. So they're not going to be a lot of bend in those, is there? There's also quite a lot of air bubble sort of marks on them, so not quite as, as I'd hoped. And buying them on a mobile phone, I didn't really see where it said plaster, but hey-ho. One thing I do like is these knock walls, and whilst they seem to be quite rigid, if you apply heat to them, like a you know hairdryer sort of hot air gun, they will bend, um, they become pliable, and they will keep their shape. Um, and I've used them over on the approach to the branch line station and going down towards the other helix. These are good. However, why would I pay for something when I've already got an alternative? Now, these little arches come in um, a pack of sort of three arches as it were and they're from Langley Models and here you can see them for sale and if you contact Langley Models I think when I at the time of recording there were 20 in stock. Um, <laughs> they really are cheap and cheerful but 
it kind of does what it says on the packet really so what i'm thinking of doing also i recovered these from the old chadwick and i've always used them in this layout just to hide things behind you know, like the inclined piers on the other side um, but um, a useful little thing as a backdrop for when i do my filming anyway what's my plan well as you can see i've drawn a line on here now so what i'm thinking you're doing is dropping these gluing these to the face of this panel and obviously these will remain horizontal and so they will get shorter as this incline climbs uh, away from the helix that will leave me uh, some space above and i'll probably use engineer's brick um, and, and coping stones to give it a, a different sort of feel at the top to sort of break up the, the plainness of these arches so that is my current plan well it's now the following morning i did come back up here yesterday evening and i glued on this first panel onto the foam board um, and sadly sort of not the mistake but i i i copied the old um arches and i'd used good old um evo stick wherever i can find it and there it is um evo stick impact adhesive um, just because I'd used it in the past but times have moved on and I now own a decent sort of hot glue gun which I should have done because this had to be clamped overnight to make sure it went off whereas with a hot glue gun obviously you can do it hold it in place and within a couple of minutes it should be good to go so what I shall do now is put on the next couple of panels using the hot glue gun and uh, see how that goes as you can see now it kind of looks pretty respectable um, the panel this panel is is just a little laid back from vertical and I think it gives you the sort of the right effect and then I'm leaving this space here for um, a sort of a, a row of coping stones and then some brick panel to go over the top of that now it's only the recessed arch areas that have the contact points with the foam board so all I'm going to do is put a little bit of hot glue in those areas Hot glue doesn't, uh, it's not really forgiving really, um, you can sort of pull it off quite, uh, you know, as soon as you put it on sort of thing, but it's, uh, you do need to get a wig along with it. Right, hopefully we'll get it right first time. That should be that. So one more to go, that should go against there quite well, same again, get it lined up. I think we're pretty level. So have we got the effect that we want? Well, pretty much. I mean, there's a gap between these two panels. Obviously the gaps at the bottom will be covered with ballast and uh, cable troughing, that sort of thing. And there's a little bit of damage on one of the top sections just there, as you can see, but pretty good. Well, as you can see, I've progressed with this retaining wall, although these two foam boards aren't actually joined, they're just a paper clip in between. Uh, but you can see the way it sort of flows around and we get the basic idea of what it's going to look like. Over in the far corner here, I've got a lot of landscaping to do to make the hillside work. But first of all, what I need to do now is consider what's going on down at the tunnel mouth end. Now when I built this hillside a few months ago I hadn't actually decided where the tunnel mouth was going to go. I wanted to see how the sort of land formed. The freight yard hadn't been designed so all this area was kind of work in progress. Well clearly things have gone on now so there's some sort of stark decisions to be made and one of the things that occurred to me was a usual three o'clock in the morning job about ballasting inside the tunnel. 
because clearly when a train goes into the tunnel and I'm filming it or a train comes from uh, the, t the helix through this tunnel mouth and out, you will see that the track hasn't been ballasted. So clearly there's a, you know, I don't know, half a, well, say 10 centimetres, six inches, eight inches or whatever. This area needs to be ballasted prior to be building the hillside. Furthermore, the tunnel mouth will need, the tunnel itself will need some kind of lining. So, you know, we need something to go over here to kill the light and emitting from the tunnel. Um, we can always use card or some other kind of affair um, like that around the tunnel to make sure that no light can come from the tunnel. All straightforward stuff, but it has to be thought about at this stage. And another thing to consider, of course, is the landform on the other side of the tracks. Because if this hillside came down here originally and flowed all the way along, then when the railway came in to uh, make this tunnel, then they wouldn't have removed all the soil from this side just for the fun of it. They wouldn't have um, endured that extra expense. So therefore, this kind of shape of this hillside needs to come along in this area here and to form a more of a, um, a sensible cutting, a more realistic cutting on this side um, of the, the tracks as well as obviously on this side. So I think it's time to get the Celotex out. Now Celotex or Recital or Mary, various other um, trade names but people refer to it as Celotex so it's the kind of stuff that goes um, between your cavity of your house and that sort of stuff. Light thermal um, thermal qualities cuts well. If you need some go to a building site and ask if they've got any spare any off cuts because they have to pay for landfill disposal so if you want to take away some off cuts hopefully they can sort you out. Now it comes in three inch or 75 millimeter blocks or two inch 50 millimeter blocks. Um, so I need to now configure this so it sort of flows up here and obviously it must come above the height of this tunnel mouth. So what I think I shall do first off is chop away this section and that section and then build this around and then sort of chisel it into shape and then glue it down. And I tend to glue it down using uh, mastic, I sort of old bathroom sealant and that sort of stuff. Um, so, so there's no expense, you're just using up, you know, old stock. Right, I shall get a saw and crack on. Right. So we're back to the bare bones. Now we just need to figure out where it's all going to go. Now blocks of Celotex is very much like Lego for modelers, really. Um, it's just a case of figuring out where you want it. And uh, I obviously need to build a hillside back from that, um, from the tunnel mouth. I need a bit in here like that. And then we drop in the existing baseboard. Let's see if that fits okay. No it doesn't. Hang on, that goes out there. And then we can see how it needs to be shaped up. And if I drop in that a bit of retaining wall, hopefully you can see it sort of shape up. So once I've glued all these back in, or glued these in, then I can sort of take a knife to them and shape them and so we get some kind of a, a flow, an extension of this hillside that sweeps its way down and around here. Well there we are, pretty much good to go. I may raise the height of this slightly by when I add the brickwork and bring it up a, another couple of centimetres, perhaps half an inch or an inch here. Um, and of course when I carve it up now and glue it down, not forgetting that I still need access uh, in behind the tunnel mouth there to do the ballasting and the tunnel liner before I actually seal it all up and landscape it. So what am I using? I'm using a Unibond silicon sealant, healthy kitchen and bathroom, beautiful. So all I do is 
that's this is where this block's going is show some on the base of it give it a quick smear I've made a terrible mistake in the past of putting far too much down um, you don't really need a lot it sticks some um, it sticks reasonably well um, you can see the mess I've made before when I've applied too much of this stuff I've sort of mapped out where it's going lovely and this block in there And then shoving it in just give it a, a twist and it will bed itself in and then this great big slab here I'm not too sure on the final size of it but we'll fit it and then we can always rethink this one later and obviously the one that goes over the top unsurprisingly is not going to be glued down where was it that was going <clears throat> there whereas this one here can go into its final place in there but we need to put the sealant on the base units that will nestle its way in there and then when these obviously not that one when these lower other components have gone off a little then I can start to take a carving knife to them and sort of shape them into some kind of uniformity for the hill to run down. So as you can see I've shaped up the old um, hillside and it seems to flow but as usual I will use a plaster cloth and sculptor mould to give it its final form but of course I can't do any more of that until I've um, ballasted the track underneath and sorted out the tunnel lining. So um, what, what started with retaining walls sort of grew legs today, didn't it? But hopefully you found it interesting. And if you did, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, then please hit the old subscriber button. I'd like to thank the patrons who make it all possible because without your help, I couldn't be really doing these videos. Uh, it's the, the, the expense is enormous. Um, so I'd like to thank you personally. And if you're not a subscriber, there's the old subscriber button and a video here and here. And I'll see you in two weeks time. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye-bye.